Okay, so if you remember last time we did the login screen, so we're going to move on next to the, the next part of the um, assignment, which is the actual quiz. So I'm just going to show you how we might possibly go about doing that. Now you might decide to do other methods, and that's perfectly fine, but I'll just show you this way. Okay, so here we have um, the login screen, which you did last lesson, and it goes through this code, and then it says, okay, if it's correct, then we need to do something. So what I've done, I've, I've created another form called take quiz. So I've gone on to project, add another form, called it FRM, that's short for form, take quiz. So what this is saying here, if I've logged in correctly, then me.hide, which basically means hide the form, because we don't want it to be there anymore. It's still there, but we've just hidden it. And then it says, open up the take quiz and show it. So show the form. Now this is the clever bit. What it does, it says on that form, the username label dot text is equal to the username here. So it puts whatever user I've logged in, it will put it at the top of the form. So let's go to the other form, which is what this is what I've decided to do. Um, and it's very simple. So I put a label here, okay, called username, and that text is username, and as per normal, I've called it LBL username. And if you go back to the login, that's where it says um, LBL username dot text equals username. So I'm setting the username on that form. Okay. This is just a standard label. Question again, another label, another label, another label. Notice I've also changed the font size to make it slightly bigger. Now these things you wouldn't have seen. These are called uh, pictures, and they can be found on the form over here under um, picture surprisingly enough so it should be called picture box which is there all right and I've dragged that on and with a picture box you can set the image and the size mode if you don't want to select it here you can select it down here so it should be under image so there we have I'm just trying to find it um, okay one. Sorry, it might be on that one. Let's have a look. Mm. So um, yeah, so we go down here, set the shape, and it should be under image, which is just down here. Okay, click on image, and from there, if you click on the little ellipse there, you can change, you can import and I've imported the graphic which is just a square and also you've got to make sure that the size mode is stretched otherwise what will happen is it won't stretch to the size of of the application All right. so then I've put one there one there and one there I've put the shapes in here and then I've used this thing called a list box. Now you don't have to use a list box, I've used that to sort of show you the different options so when we get the question that comes up it'll say the different answers and then you select whatever answer you want to in the list box. I might make that a little bit smaller because I'm only going to have four options. And then I've got two buttons here, one that says uh, next question and one that says save and exit. So there's quite a bit to do here. I'm just going to do a simple bit now so that when you select a shape it will get rid of the other shapes and then start the actual questions. So how do we do that? Well, very simple. Double click on one of these and it will come up with an action. Now what I've done is for each shape I've activated this code. Now this is called, a, we've done this before, this is when you call another subroutine. So I've created this subroutine here called generate question and in here I put a parameter called shape and what a parameter means is that variable is going to be equal to whatever is sent it. So when I click this button it will say generate question with the value 1. It will then generate another question with the value 2 and generate a third question with the value 3. It puts that value into this variable so then I can use that variable in my code. This bit here turns every single shape off so they're not visible. 
including the selected. But with the selected, I set that to true because I'm going to say this is the shape you've selected. I also then say if it's one, then switch on that shape and change the selected text to circle. If it's two, then switch that on, etc. etc. So it will switch on the ones that it needs to switch on. One thing I forgot to mention back on the design, when I put all these here, the, the ones I didn't want to appear, obviously I don't want anything to appear until you've selected the shape. And so in these bits, I've set the default, the visible, as false. So here we go, visible equals false. And the same for the others. So they don't show up straight away until you've selected the shape. The other thing I'll need to say here is make the the, the quiz questions visible in the section. So the next bit or the next exercise I'm going to show you is how to actually start doing the quiz code which is the hardest bit and that will be in this section here. Now if you can think of ways of doing that hopefully I've generated some ideas for you. There we go, I'll just test it to see if it works. Okay, hopefully it should work. So I'll come up here, G Bradshaw. Normally you'd hide the password, but I've just done this. It says you're logged in, puts my username up there, and as you can see, I can pick one of these questions and it says I've picked a circle. Ah, oops, done that a bit wrong there. So obviously we switched off the wrong ones. So if we can see question one, hmm. So if it equals question one, so I've picked the square, but I've switched the circle on. So obviously I'd have to change that code because that's a bit of a mistake there. So instead of said circle, if I pick one, it's the square. Stop that there. Square equals visible. And obviously that's now a square. Ooh. and so forth and so on. You'd have to change that to reflect it. So hopefully that gives you some ideas.